So we have a Power Smart snowblower here. It's a model DB7651-24. So this Power Smart unit will not start, they say, at all. So the gas in it looks okay. I looked at it. It looks pretty clear. I didn't see any water in it at all. If I had to guess, it's a carburetor issue. If it's not starting at all, let's see here. All right, so it is turning over. We're gonna check the spark here on the other side real quick. A handy check spark. So we're getting good spark out of it. it. Sounds like it has compression. It feels like it has compression. So we probably got a carburetor issue. So we're gonna get this thing pulled out here, get the carburetor pulled off, and figure out what exactly we got going on. Nine times out of 10, it's a carburetor issue. To fix something like this, if it's a carburetor issue in one of these, you're not gonna need many tools. Basically, this is all you need to get everything done in the unit. So, you're essentially gonna need some micro drill bits, or a torch tip cleaner set. Even just a wire brush will work for something like this though. You need a 10 millimeter. You can use a ratchet or uh, it's gotta be some sort of socket because if it's not, then you're not gonna be able to get in the deep areas to get something like this. You've gotta have, it's gotta go through there. So you can't use a, a short, socket it's got to be something a little bit deeper to go through there but anyway a pair of needle nose a pair of pliers and then some sort of screwdriver that's halfway halfway large but halfway it can't be too small either because your middle jet will strip out if you use one too small so you've got to use one that's just the right size one of these utility screwdrivers the bigger size of it almost all of them work about perfect as far as that goes so we like to use those nice and cheap quick and easy but we'll get this carburetor here pulled off basically you got a couple right here in the front apparently you need a 5 16 here for the other side I forgot all about that you can use a 5 16 or an 8 millimeter socket and that's gonna be for your ones on the front here. I forgot on these power smiths. They were a different size. That one doesn't wanna come out. I'm gonna to have to get the big, big impact out. First thing you wanna do before you really start messing with any kind of snowblower, I'm putting spark plug wire. Just a nice, nice easy thing that you can do that, that prevents accidents from happening. So, unplug that. rest of these out here. There's two there. Got a couple here on the front hand side. One there, one there. And again, you can use an 8 millimeter or a 5 16 for that. The other's got to be a 10. From there, slightly lift your muffler up. Slightly lift the muffler. kind of out so out and up just like that and it slides out of there so you don't want to take that whole muffler off for no reason so again just kind of out and up and that gets this to pop out from under it and it just pulls out from there you pull it kind of off to the side pull your primer line off it just comes up and out this came kind of halfway out here but you just push that back in you do want to make sure that those stay in there though you don't want to lose them so and then on the back side here, you just want to unplug the vent line there for the crankcase. All right, so again, just make sure these do actually stay in here. You want those to stay just like that. Don't let them fall out or lose them. This comes straight off. The gasket and spacer there. Then we'll get our fuel line off. We'll also need a, we got a hose, just a bucket here. 
to drain the fuel into. So what you do here with the with the fuel line so you can just take your pair of needle nose there and you can come right in here at the side at an angle and just kind of pry up a little bit and then from there take it and move back and forth loosen it the rest of the way and then pull it straight off that or you can continue to pry off depending of course it is easier if you take the So yeah, just straight off there. And again, we're using a quarter inch as far as the sizing on this goes, but a 3 16 would work too. That fuel that came out of there looks like it was kind of cloudy. So cloudiness is a, is a pretty common sign of bad fuel. And it may be something where it had just a tiny bit sitting in the bottom and he added to it or something. I'm not really sure, but it doesn't smell real hot. From there, what you're going to do is you're going to want to take that carburetor and you're going to want to pull it directly towards you. So, from here, you can pull straight back. So, at that point, when you're out a little ways, you can take the spring off here. It just comes up and out of there. And then the governor comes straight up and out. So, depending on where you're at here, it'll come up and go straight back down in. So, just pull it out a little blaze. It does look like here the gasket on the back came with it. We're going to replace that gasket anyway. But you want to make sure on these that that gasket is either in good shape or that you replace it. If that gasket's in bad shape, your unit's not going to run right. It's going to have an air leak. So on this, in this case, when it rips like that, razor blade just across the face of the surface. Best way to get it off nice and easily. Right. So from there we got the carburetor all off. I'll show you how to take it completely apart. We'll get it cleaned up and see if that's what we got going on here. <clears throat> so We got this here, we can use our same 10 millimeter. Go ahead and take the bottom off. Oh, guess you gotta switch it back to the 10 millimeter to use your same 10 millimeter. But anyway, I'm, I'm gonna put it down this way because this side will hold a little bit more of the fuel. I wanna see kind of kind of what was in the carburetor when we get to that point. Oh, I don't see anything in there whatsoever. Nothing, it's bone dry not a thing in the carburetor whatsoever so what that means at that point is that your needle in your seat is stuck so if you look right here the needle in the seat there is stuck so we're gonna go ahead and take the pin out here and then from there you you don't want to force this out of here because that that needle down in there is stuck in there so if you try to force this out it's gonna break it's gonna break this float you're not gonna do that. What you're gonna do is you're gonna take your needle nose pliers here and you're just gonna grab and pinch and turn. So you're gonna turn back and forth. It's kind of hard to get a hold of, kind of hard to do, but just kind of lightly turn back and forth. As soon as you get that thing to start turning, it'll loosen right up. You can also use a little bit of gum out carburetor cleaner. It'll help loosen it up a little bit. We use the gum out anyway. Seems to be a little less nauseous on the on the eyes and stuff like that so again you're turning here you're just grabbing and you're turning so we're trying to get that just to loosen up enough that that'll come up out of there so we got here doesn't seem like it's wanting there it goes finally went into turn with me so back and forth and then straight up and out so if you look here the reason that was having issues is because there's this ethanol residue all over it. So this carburetor wasn't even getting any fuel. No fuel whatsoever to it. So 
we're going to clean all that up. You're going to want to make sure there's none of that left over when you're done. So a lot of times it's a lot harder to see, but in this case it's not. So the rest of the carburetor actually looks pretty good. Again, you're going to use a screwdriver. You're going to want to make sure it's not, not too wide because it's got to fit down in there nice, all the way down in there. But if it's, if it's not wide enough, you can strip out that brass down in there. So that brass down in there is very delicate. A lot of times they're stuck pretty bad with ethanol buildup and stuff. So you want to push here as you're doing it. So find the notch down in there and then you'll push in while you're unscrewing it. Because otherwise that brass will strip out real easily. So at that point you just unscrew it. You'll take that bottom jet out. We're unscrewing right now. Just turn it over, kind of tap it. There it is. So it's in here and it looks like it's pretty clear. A lot of times that's the main issue is that that main jet is clogged up. It looks clear. I don't see a bunch of ethanol residue or anything. But down in here, you can see in the brass, it's just packed. So we'll take the emulsion tube out next. It doesn't look like it wants to come. If you look at the down through the choke, you can see the emulsion tube straight down through the center there. So if you grab it here and just pry downwards, so pry slightly downwards, it gets right out of there. See, now it's not in there. I pried straight down. So I took it and I pried straight down to get that out of there. Now, okay. This one's a stubborn one, but that's fine. So what we'll do now, since it didn't come out that way, we're gonna spray a little bit of gum out car cleaner in here. That'll kind of break that bond in there. We're gonna push this back in. Yep, straight back up in there. So it's back in again up top. Now we're gonna pry it out again. So take there, pry straight out. Okay, it's most of the way out now again. There it comes right there and it's got it's got ethanol residue all over it all up and down this so that's definitely not good there and then we want to remove the pilot jet over here on the side so this is the low speed idle screw but it doesn't really do much in this case because we, we don't ever come to an idle. We always stay full speed. So you're just gonna wanna pry up here on your pilot jet, straight up. It comes straight up out, just kinda pry. And there's a little jet down through here also. So those are your main three areas that need cleaned at this point. So we use an ultrasonic cleaner to clean all this stuff up. We throw it in there and it, it cleans it real well. <clears throat> if you don't have an ultrasonic, obviously, <clears throat> you can just use the gum out along with a compressed air or anything like that you can really use just about anything as long as you're sure it's rinsed off afterwards as long as it kind of eats at what we're doing so again we're going to put this in the ultrasonic here for a little bit it's got about a five to ten percent mixture of simple green in it and that's all it has just simple green and water so nice and environmentally friendly and it works very very well so Again, just throwing this in the ultrasonic. If you don't have an ultrasonic, you'll just do it with the, the carburetor cleaner and the compressed air. Looks like this thing went into overheat mode. This one does sometimes, but it's still nice and warm. We're gonna go ahead and let it clean here. We'll let it clean off there come back and we'll get it all put back together all right so I've got it out of the cleaner here I only put it in for about five minutes but anyway from here you want to spray it off spray the whole outside off here get everything nice and clean get all that water off there there's a bunch of blue markings on this one for some reason then you're gonna to want to get all down in these jets so you're gonna to want to spray it down in there full want to get down in everywhere you can here so and then the jets here also in there and one on the inside here it looks like the other two are just dummies I believe anyway yeah 
they stamp these carburetors for many different applications, but they use the same carburetor, just these holes aren't used in some and in others they are. It didn't clean all this 100% out because I didn't leave it in there forever, but you want to make sure all this gets cleaned out well. You can use a uh, carburetor cleaner and compressed air. You can use torch tip cleaners. You can use a wire brush. You know, that's something that if you don't have anything on hand is nice. You can just pull out a loom and then you can use that to clean all down in here. So you want to make sure that, especially down in here, all of this is clean. So if you put that backwards there though, just that, that wire brush. And this is brass so it doesn't scratch it up real well or anything like that. You can see just all the stuff that's already kind of gotten on there. It's kind of colored, discolored at this point. So it works real well that way though for this application. You use that. Or the torch tip cleaners also. So that you'll just work all the way down and around. So you'll move straight up and down and you'll go all the way around the outside there. That's not quite a thick enough one. It doesn't want to stay. But you go just like this here and just all the way around, straight up and down. And that's just all you're doing is you're removing that ethanol buildup from around there so it doesn't, it doesn't keep that needle and seat from flowing back up again. So you're just gonna go straight up and down and kind of work that off of there until it's gone. It takes a while sometimes, you gotta kind of work at it, you know, do different various things, you know, go both ways with the, so that's just, I, I'm wanting that to just kind of break that up in there. Just kind of get all that ethanol broken up in there so it comes off and all around it. You don't want any of that in there. You see how that did before. So when we're done, basically we want it all the way clean down through there. You shouldn't see anything on the walls down in there. You shouldn't see anything at the bottom down in there. It's nice and easy again to do with that, with that wire brush. It just makes it super simple and it doesn't really cost anything. You know, that's that's one of my favorite methods. We do use the micro bits and things like that at points in times, but it just really depends on what kind of mood I'm in most of the time. <clears throat> Here, you can take this off and it just kind of pulls down and out. So, it's got a spring on it. Take that off. Then you want to get this all cleaned up too. So either your fingernail or you can use your wire brush again, you know, to go around there. You don't want to wire brush the tip though. You want to stay away from the tip with a wire brush. So you don't want to scratch it and ruin it. But you want everything along there, especially against the corner, all the way around. You want all that stuff off of there. If any of that's left, it's gonna just do exactly the same thing it did before. That's all you're gonna end up doing is being right back in the same boat with something like this. This is hardened, so it is nice and easy. Just a wire brush the top here, as long as you're not around the around the rubber tip. I like to use a fingernail too, just straight, just straight up and down. But get that all off. You don't want any of that left over. There's anything on there, you're gonna have issues. So. We've got it pretty well clean. We'll put our spring back on there and then hold that straight down and reinstall. Now that we're back on there, should be just, yep, <clears throat> nice and simple there. So we'll go ahead and put it back in here, straight down in. You want to make sure that that doesn't hang up at all when you're pushing it down in there. If it does, it's going to leak. So go ahead and put our float pin back in here. Perfect. And then your drain always goes 180 degrees from your inlet. So wherever your fuel comes in, 180 degrees from it. The jets here, you've got your emulsion tube here. If you look real close, you can see a bunch of holes in that. This isn't real 
it's pretty dirty I only left it in for about five minutes or so but it is definitely pretty dirty so we're gonna go ahead and just scrub that off here to begin with so we'll just take it and we'll scrub all that stuff off the outside since it's so bad a lot of times will be varying cases you know this is a pretty bad case of one it's in pretty bad shape but we'll see here and then we'll go through these Oop. still a little bit on the outside there a little bit on the outside I'm not sure why why it's wanting to do that but What we're gonna do is we're gonna take one of these and we're just gonna poke in each one of these holes all the way across. Again, you can use torch tip cleaner, you can use a micro drill bit. You can use really anything to go through here. You just wanna make sure these jets are completely clean. If they're not clean, it's not gonna run right. So anything really works pretty well with this. Ethanol is not, I mean, it's not in there real real good but it there's nothing really to help clean it out you know unless you can get it running to begin with and sometimes that'll help clean it through but again just straight across in every single hole here through and you'll want to clean clean and clean and clean get that done so if you miss one it's not going to run right so make sure they're a hundred percent clean And again, this one is rather bad for most of them we see. All right. So those look nice and clean. If we look down through them here now, should be able to see a perfect hole straight down through. So you should be able to see light on the other side all the way through there. Kind of hard here. I don't know if we'll... Oh yeah, it's definitely there. It's hard to see here. There we go. See a perfect circle straight down through on these? That means that it's nice and clean. It's ready to be ran as far as that goes. You want to look down through here also if it's dirty in there. Also take your torch tip. That's what's nice about these is they can get down on the inside here and you can clean all that out too if there's anything on the inside there. In this case, I don't know that there was a lot, but again, check back down through again. Make sure you get a full hole through all these all the way down through. If you're not, it's not gonna run right so that one's good down here you want to make sure that anything around this jet here is all clean you want everything there and you can use this anything you want really again to clean it off but get all that nice and cleaned off down there all the way around and then you can either use your torch tip cleaner or again your You just want to make sure that's nice and clean there. So, all right, it's nice and clean. So we'll put the emulsion tube back in. The skinnier part goes down if the carburetor is upside down, but it goes actually up. So it'll go straight in there. And then you've got the jet here. It's your bottom jet. It's nice and clean. And again, you want to. Go ahead and just screw that back in. All right. Reinstall your bowl here. And again, 180 from the inlet is where you want the is where you want the drain. 180 from the inlet. So we're gonna go ahead and tighten that down here. You got your gasket there on the bottom, of course. We're going to replace that back gasket. In this case, we're going to use a Honda 16221-ZH8801. So we got the back gasket on there. That's that Honda gasket. We want to go ahead and put the pilot jet here. Make sure that it is clear by forcing something through it so just like everything else you want to run one down through 
make sure that it's clear, which it is. And then we're gonna go ahead and put it back in the carburetor. You also wanna make sure these O-rings all around here are good. Those should be in good shape. If they're not, it's not gonna run right. So that'll just snap straight down in. And then you'll get your idle, idle jet here and you want that about halfway in. Again, it's not really being used, but you wanna make sure if it tries to surge and pull back all the way, that it doesn't go all the way back. So, about halfway in there again. Looking on the other side, it'll be just a little, little ways out. All right, throw it back up on there, just straight in. Then you'll throw your fuel line back on. I always like to start with the fuel line and make sure the, the fuel line is good. It's not cracked or anything around the edge here. You'll put your clamp back on and then you'll go ahead and push it straight back down on the inlet. With the fuel line already being on there, it's nice and easy. You don't have to mess with it afterwards. So you'll put your seal there back on and the spacer. And you can get this at any time. It's either at the beginning or now with the governor linkage here. So the spring went on. And then with the with the back here, again, forward to backwards, you want to make sure if you do it about halfway and push it straight down, it's a little bit easier than the way I just did it. But again, it's back on there. We'll go ahead and hook up our primer line here. Just goes there to the side, pushes straight down. Nice and easy there. Perfect. So then we'll get our adapter here on the front. Again, make sure that these are installed correctly. We'll go ahead and push that straight in here. All right, attach our crankcase vent tube there. Everything there is all good to go. So from there, what we're gonna have is we're gonna choke this and we're gonna line it up with the hole here. So then we're gonna go and up here at the top, like we were before, we're gonna make sure that we're, that we're pushing to the left and we're pulling up and out. So at the same time, we're gonna line up with the holes down here. So up and out, just to the left, up and under with the top, and from there you line up these holes. So we're all good there. I'm gonna put the two back in the front here. Tighten them down good, and then you've got the eight millimeter ones for the top. You wanna start them all first is normally the best way to do it. That way you ensure they go in straight. You don't wanna cross thread any of them or anything, and if it doesn't line up straight, a lot of times it's real easy to do. So if you start all of them first, it shouldn't happen. I only started three out of four, but that should line them all up real well. All right, spark plug back on. We're gonna throw a little bit of gas in this thing. We're gonna fire it up. We got some aspen here we're gonna throw in it. All right, should be enough to at least get it started there. This thing basically had fuel with ethanol in it that gummed up the carburetor to the point where it stopped the fuel flow completely. So 
what we've done now is we've cleaned the carburetor, replaced the intake gasket, and that's solved that problem. So this thing's all ready to go. We're gonna change the oil and send it back out to the customer. Thanks for watching, like and subscribe.